Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Microsoft Surface Pro 6. It has a couple of great things going on with it this generation, but at the same time, it's lacking a ton of components that could have made this the ideal computer for everyone in 2019. And unfortunately, those areas where the Surface Pro 6 is lacking in may have you thinking twice about getting one of these. So let's go over the technical details about the Surface Pro 6 first, then I'll get back to talking about my thoughts on this device, who this is for, and if the Surface Pro 6 is even worth your money this time around. So this generation, the Surface Pro 6 got a serious bump up in processing power compared to the 5th generation Surface Pro. And this is something really important that not a lot of reviewers acknowledge about this device. The Surface Pro 6 is packed with 8th generation Intel processors this generation, and that makes such a huge difference in real world performance compared to the 5th generation Surface Pro, or the Surface Pro 5 as some still call it. And the reason that this is particularly beneficial for the lower tier Pro 6 configurations is because now, thanks to the 8th gen Intel processors, the Intel Core i5s in the lower end models are quad-core processors now, just like the i7 configurations. Not only is it faster, it's now capable of running a wider list of programs, particularly CPU-intensive software that have a quad-core processor listed in their minimum requirements. And that's extremely important for PC users who use like 3D modeling software or architectural software, or even screen recording software for certain capture cards like the Elgato Game Capture HD60S that are more CPU intensive than they are GPU intensive because those were programs that past entry level surfaces could not run very well, or sometimes couldn't even run at all, as older Surface Pros were equipped with dual core processors in the lower tier configurations. The model you're seeing right here in front of me is one of the higher tier Surface Pro 6s, rocking an Intel Core i7-8650U, 16GB of RAM, and a 512GB solid state drive. But although this is my configuration of choice, if I were on a budget and the entry level Surface Pro 6 was all I could afford, I'd be 100% comfortable using that since the lower tier i5 configurations are more or less just as capable as the higher tier i7 models now in terms of multi-core processing power. That was honestly a really impetuous statement that I just made right there, but the message I'm trying to get across is that the 8th gen Intel processors really is the one thing that makes the Surface Pro 6 worth it this generation. And I hope you see that too, because the processor alone makes the Pro 6 a valid option for those looking for a premium 2-in-1 PC. Stay tuned though, because there are some qualifications that have to be applied to this statement. Now the processor upgrade is cool and all, but what else is new? Honestly, there isn't much else that's new, and in 2019, that might turn heads away from the Surface Pro 6. The obvious other new change in this generation Surface Pro is the new black finish. It actually looks really sexy when you're handling this device in person. The enclosure is still mostly made out of that magnesium alloy, not aluminum as it's always been, but there seems to be some kind of special coating on the black Surface Pro 6 that I definitely do not feel on the Platinum model. So something's different there, but that's not too important. The thing with black hardware though, is that nicks are particularly easy to see, so you're probably going to want a case for your Pro 6. Or if you don't like cases, then you just need to be really careful with this device. It can pick up nicks quite easily, so you've got to be conscious about that. You're still getting a 12.3 inch display with an aspect ratio of 3 to 2 and a screen resolution of 2736 by 1824. It's 99% color accurate in terms of the sRGB color gamut, but not as color accurate on the Adobe RGB spectrum. Viewing angles are exceptionally great, but this display is hard to see under harsh sunlight, even with the brightness maxed out. And as is much of the Surface Pro 6, the Surface Pen that you still have to buy separately is also unchanged. That means the Pro 6 still supports the amazing 4096 levels of pressure sensitivity and pen tilt that the 2017 Surface Pen can produce, but unfortunately that also means that any issues that people have had with the 2017 Surface Pen before is still present with the Surface Pro 6. And yes, that that unfortunately means that the Surface Pen's jitter issue is still around. Something I do want to mention though is that the palm rejection is ridiculously amazing on the Surface Pro 6 this generation. I thought this was just something that software updates recently fixed for all of the newest surfaces, but no. I think that the palm rejection on the Surface Pro 6 is substantially better than the palm rejection on the Surface Pro 4 and Pro 5 based on my experiences the last few months. So that's something I definitely want to mention in this review. And it was a really surprising find considering that the display technology seems to be the same maybe it isn't the same as last generation. Who knows? 
Anyway, both the rear and front facing cameras are still good, each are equipped with one microphone. Windows Hello is still a relatively good experience. It's surprisingly a lot more reliable on the Surface Pro 6 than on my Surface Book 2. Like, there's no consist there. And the stereo speakers are alright, considering how small they are. They aren't nearly as nice as, for example, the iPad Pro's speakers, but they're definitely way above average. I'm sure you'll like the speakers on the Surface just fine. Taking a look around the device, we have a mini display port, USB 3.0 type A port, and a surface connect port all on the right side of the device. Then on the left side, we have one 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a spot that you can magnetically mount your surface pen to. Under the kickstand, you have a micro SD card slot that seems to only support UHS-1 speeds as I've only been able to get read and write speeds barely going over 80 megabytes per second. So if you're planning to get a micro SD card for your Surface Pro 6 as a means of expanding expanding your device's storage, just keep in mind that you'll only be able to peak at UHS-1 read and write speeds. The keyboard and trackpad are both excellent. There simply aren't any compromises here, at least when it comes to these individual components. The type covers as a whole, on the other hand, aren't easy to use on your lap though. You'll have a better time using a type cover on a literal surface. I mean like a tabletop or a desk or something. Everything else on the Surface Pro 6 is more or less unchanged, so let's wrap things up. The Surface Pro 6 is basically the Surface Pro 4, but finally perfect, colloquially speaking. Nothing like what Apple did last year with the new 2018 iPad Pros is happening with the Surface Pro lineup this generation, that's for sure. The Surface Pro 6 still has the same old design we've been seeing in the Surface Pro lineup since 2015, but it's finally been equipped with a processor and integrated graphics that, I think, will make this device last a real Really, really long time for lots of people, but for select others, a little processor upgrade is not going to be enough for them. Now I get it, not everyone is super picky about how a device looks, but personally, my beef with the Surface Pro 6 is that the appeal and the beauty of this 4 year old design is really starting to show its age. And when you have to pay a crazy big price premium for such a luxurious device like this in 2019, Ideally, you'd want a device that also looks and feels totally new, like it should look and feel like tech that truly belongs in 2019. On another note, there's also no Thunderbolt 3 port on the Surface Pro 6, and that's a huge, huge missed opportunity right there. That could have made this device perfect, a versatile productivity machine on the go, but then connect your eGPU at home and you've got an unrivaled editing or gaming workstation. Like why is that not here in 2019? Now this might be a somewhat unfair comparison, but look, one of the Surface Pro 6's nicer looking but much more limited competitors, the 2018 iPad Pro, is amazing because it didn't just get a processor upgrade. It's been completely redesigned, it looks so much more modern and attractive, and it ditched the lightning port for a much more appreciable USB-C port. Apple brought the iPad Pros into the right direction in 2018, and it's all because of that design refresh and updated port selection. Even if you don't like the Apple e ecosystem, you have to admit that the 2018 iPad Pros are really fresh in both looks and performance. Microsoft, on the other hand, almost nailed the Surface Pro 6's device longevity, at least on the hardware side of things, thanks to that processor upgrade. But aside from that, you don't really get anything else. And that's quite underwhelming. I mean, honestly, I'm just getting awfully tired of this 2015 design and this lackluster port selection. The USB Type-A port wasn't even updated to USB 3.1 this generation. Everything's still USB 3.0 Type-A and Mini DisplayPort when, in the meantime, the rest of the world in 2019 is beyond halfway through the transition stage to USB-C and Thunderbolt 3, as far as laptops go. Now, if this same old design and unchanged port selection doesn't bother you at all, then you'll probably end up enjoying this device a lot anyway, because the Service Pro 6 has a pretty solid PC experience with the situational Windows 10 issues overlooked. But for those of you who are a little bit more tech savvy, I'd imagine that your impressions of this device would be similar to mine. So it should be obvious at this point that my overall thoughts on this device are quite critical. Again, it's arguably just a perfected Surface Pro 4, so it's not going to be everyone's definition of perfect in 2019. All of this tech would have been great four years ago. The pen technology of the 2017 Surface Pen, the quad-core processors in the lower tier configurations, the fanless i5 models, reasonably fast drive speeds, but today, that's all kind of like, whatever. You know? So with all of that in mind, if you've already migrated over to a computing environment that's heavily reliant on Thunderbolt 3, then you probably won't like the Surface Pro 6 because of its port selection. 
But for those who aren't quite there yet, like you don't heavily depend on USB-C or Thunderbolt 3 at all, then the Surface Pro 6 isn't a bad device, and it's still a particularly great computer for college students and hobbyist artists. As a college student, the one thing that I really appreciate about the Surface Pro 6 is just how nice the note-taking experience is. The 2017 Surface Pen and Surface Pro 6 combo for note-taking is just really balanced with all of the jitter issues pushed aside, primarily because of the writing friction and the convenience of having an eraser at the top of the pen that doubles as a programmable button. When it comes to drawing though, I actually prefer the 2018 iPad Pro and the second generation Apple Pencil for digital art. But the drawing experience isn't all that bad on the Surface Pro 6, don't get me wrong, I can still make some awesome things with it, and since this device is arguably a lot better than the iPad Pro and most other 2-in-1s in terms of satisfying multiple needs or wants in one device, I think the trade-offs are quite considerable. Programmers might like the Surface Pro 6 too. Now that the i5s are quad-core processors, the lower tier configurations are much more worthwhile options now, so programmers and software engineers could opt into an entry-level Surface Pro 6 as their second secondary device, and know that they're not just getting some crabby processor unlike before. So that cuts down the cost of the device for those kinds of people. The main argument I hear when it comes to long-term programming on the Surface Pro 4, 5, and 6 is that the 12.3 inch display is too small. But if you're a programmer who practices good programming style, then I think you'll discover that this display is actually just right. I mean, you can always connect an external display to this thing anyway, so don't forget about that. Now when it comes to gamers and other content creators, I still can't recommend the Surface Pro 6 to you guys since it's equipped with an Intel UHD Graphics 620. It's just not ideal for any of that stuff at all. But if you do end up getting this device, regardless of what I say, you can definitely make things work out. Like it's not totally impossible to work or game with this iGPU, at least it's not integrated Intel HD graphics. Like one of the things that I personally use the Surface Pro 6 for is reviewing and offloading footage when I'm out filming videos. So filmmakers could definitely make this device work. And if you're a 3D modeler or some other graphic designer who uses GPU intensive applications, the Pro 6 is alright, but your 3D modeling program's working environment might lag quite a bit if you work with extremely large format 3D models. So I guess the short answer is, if you're in the market for a premium 2-in-1 PC right now and you're looking at the Surface Pro 6 as one of your options, you're in for a real treat because this is a really solid device. And if you're absolutely set on getting a Surface Pro 6, but you're just wondering what model to even get at all, I actually think that any of the configurations would be totally worth your money, even the i5 models. So unless this is going to be your primary PC, and by that I mean like the only laptop you'll own for a long while, in which case I'd recommend that you'd get a higher end i7 model, then the i5, 8GB of RAM, 256GB SSD model would be my general recommendation. But on another note, the only demographic of people that I see this device being 100% perfect for are college students, hobbyist content creators to a certain extent, and those who specialize in technology sciences. For everyone else, this may be challenging to recommend, especially if you're dependent on Thunderbolt 3, dependent on other high bandwidth ports, or just looking for an extra media consumption device. Don't get this thinking that you can play some gnarly AAA titles at high settings or edit some 4K film project that requires some heavy color grading. That's just not what this device is for. You'd be paying a lot of money for a device that isn't that capable. But if you need a new computer with a fully functional file management system that can run the creativity or productivity suites you use every day, then the Surface Pro 6 checks off. I just wish that it had a nice redesign and some new ports, with Thunderbolt 3 being my personal wish, but I guess this is what we're stuck with this generation. So that's all, thanks for watching my review of the Surface Pro 6. Drop a like if you liked it, subscribe if you loved it. My time is up, so I'll see you guys again in my next video.